Hi, welcome back to Statistics One. We're in Lecture Three, and today I'd like to introduce you to the R software. Some of you may have already installed and downloaded R, and if so, you might not need this first segment. But even if you have, uh, you might want to follow along and see if everything is installed correctly, and I'll talk about some of the packages that you might need as we go through the course. If you haven't installed R, that's fine. We're going to walk through step-by-step step how to do it. In this lecture, I've organized it into two segments. The first, we're just going to download and install R and talk about packages. And in the second segment, we'll actually write a script together. And that's necessary because the first homework assignment is to write a script that allows you to do histograms and descriptive statistics, what we covered in Lecture 2. So today, what we'll do is we'll actually write a script together where you read data into R, you access the data, you plot histograms, and you get descriptive statistics, just like I showed you in Lecture 2. But first, let's make sure that everybody has R downloaded and has the right packages installed. So in this first segment, we're just going to do the download and the install. Now first, why are we using R software in this, in this course? Uh, there are several reasons. First of all, and this is the primary reason for this course on Coursera, is it's free. And that, just like Coursera, all you need is an internet connection. So you ha if you have an internet connection, you he you're here, you can access these videos, you can access R, you can follow along and do all the examples that I'm doing in the course, you can do all the homework assignments, you can submit your scripts for homework, and they'll get graded, and it's all free. So this is really incredible and, and, and a wonderful uh, um, opportunity, and also uh, one of the primary reasons to use R. Another great benefit of R, again, for our purposes, is that it works on any platform. So whether you're using a, an Apple or whether you're using a PC, uh, it, it'll work on, on any system. Another great thing uh, as you become uh, more experienced in R is R is open source. And what that means is you can modify the code. You can create your own functions, you can create your own packages, and you can, so you can change the code if, if you don't like it. Uh, what that means is it's also extremely flexible. R is also known for having outstanding graphics. Now, uh, I, I'll warn you, it takes a while to, <laughs> to get to learn how to use those graphics and really exploit the power, but once you do, and, and we'll, we'll cover some of it in this course, uh, it's, it's pretty exceptional uh, what you can do graphically in R. Um, and it's widely used in, in both academia, so both at universities, and in, in businesses all over the world. And, and that's growing uh, at a rapid pace. Uh, so here at Princeton, we're, uh, we're to the point where almost every statistics course is now using R. Uh, there are lots of businesses, including, uh, for example, Google, has lots of users within Google who are using R as their primary tool for statistical analysis. And that use is on the rise. Now, I will say, and, and you've probably heard this before, R has a steep learning curve. I'm not going to deny that. And in this course, I'll try to walk you through it in a really friendly way so that you can get through that learning curve, sort of the, the least amount of sweat and tears <laughs> as possible. Okay, so um, we can do this together, or you can sort of pause and go and, and work on the side uh, with this video so that you're, you, you're downloading and, and installing as I'm going through this video, however you want to do it. Uh, we'll also make these notes available on the course webpage, so in case something goes wrong as you're trying to do this, you can go back to the notes. But it's very simple, and this should take less than a half an hour for you to do on your own. So first, just go to the R website. So R has its own website. 
there's the URL. Just go to that R website and then click on the link that says CRAN and then choose your country and city. Now note, this doesn't actually have to be exactly where you are. In fact, when I do it, I always do California. Even though I'm in New Jersey, sometimes I'm in New York, um, I do California, it just makes me feel warmer for some reason. Um, so you can do at really any location. Um, I would try and pick something that's in your time zone, that usually helps. Um, and then um, select the link that matches your operating system. If you're working from an Apple, particularly if you're doing this with the OS X uh, operating system, then you'll want to follow these steps. Notice it's just five steps. You click on the link for r-2-14.1 package. I'm doing this in mid-August uh, 2012, so that may be updated. Uh, again, we'll put this on the course webpage. You want to select the option to save file for that package. Then all you have to do is follow the installation prompts. When the installation is complete, an R icon will be added to your applications folder. Just like when you download any software, you'll get, uh, it'll be added to your applications folder and you'll see the R icon. To open R, just click that icon. It's as simple as that. If you're working from Windows, then you choose the base installation. You click on the link for, again, R.2.14.1. Select the option to run that executable file, run the .exe file. Again, the remainder of the installation, you just follow the prompts. We recommend doing the customized startup, and you can customize that as you wish. Uh, when the installation is complete, the R icon will be added to your desktop. If you want to launch it, just double click that icon and R will open. It's very simple. It should take, again, at most a half an hour to go through all these steps and have R installed and ready to go. And again, these notes will be posted on the course website in case you can't do it now or in case you're running, in, running into a snag for some reason. The other thing you want to do after you install the R software is start to install what are called packages. So the way R works is it's just a collection of packages. And packages are just a collection of functions. So the first package and one package that we'll use a lot in this course is the psych package, P-S-Y-C-H, for psychology. I teach statistics in the psychology department at Princeton, so a lot of the analyses that we do are common to psychologists. So this is the first place we'll start. We'll download a lot of other packages as we go through the course because there are lots of nifty functions that I've found, as I've, as I've learned are, that don't exist in the psych package that may exist in some other package. So the way to install packages, and before I say that, let me, let me also say, the way to just explore the packages is on the R website. You can just go to the packages link and you can see all the different types of packages that are available. I forget how many there are now, like there are thousands. Um, but to install a package, you can do this right from the R console. So in the R console is what you see when you open up the R software. And the R prompt is this little symbol that looks like a greater than sign. That's the R prompt in the R console. To install the psych package, just type that first line. Install dot packages, open parentheses, quote, psych, close parentheses close quote, close parentheses. Then you'll install the, the package. Then you have to load the package. To do that, just type library open paren site close paren. Notice here I have this pound sign and it says loads the package. That's because in R, the pound sign denotes a comment is coming. 
So I'm going to start doing that in my slides, is just putting the pound sign in to put in a comment on that line of code. So this line of code is library.psych. What does it do? It loads the package. The pound sign is the comment. How do you know that you have it in your working directory? Well, you can just use the search function. If you just type search, open paren, close paren, then that will tell you what packages are loaded into your working directory. If you do that now, if you have R installed, you'll see that hopefully you can get the psych package in there, but you'll see you have lots of other packages immediately upon downloading R. R, in the initial installation, gives you some basic packages for free that you don't have to install. Uh, so you should see a list of those, uh, as well as the psych package. But make sure you get the psych package because you'll need that for the first homework assignment. The next thing to do uh, is just explore R. And this is really the way to learn it, is just to poke around, see what you can find. So if you click the R icon, that opens up the software. It shows you the R console. Then, in either Windows or in Apple, if you click on the File menu, go to Menu, go to New Document, that will open up what's called the R Editor. And that's where we're going to do the bulk of our work. The R Editor is where we're going to write scripts. And I'll show you an example of that in this first lecture. So in the R console, the way the console works is you just write a line of code, you hit enter, and that code is executed. And you'll get a result return. Um, so right there in the R console, for example, you could start out by just playing around with it. You could treat it as a, as a calculator. So you could just type in, say, 5 plus 2, hit enter, it will return 7. Uh, that's sort of cute, but we're not going to do that. Um, because I want to get to writing scripts. That's what we're actually will be doing in this course. So in the R editor, what you do is you write several lines of code. And when you're done writing several lines of code, you can save that as a script. Then you execute that script. And the results of all that code are returned in the, in the R console. And that's what we'll do here in this lecture, and that's what you'll be required to do for the first homework. The last thing to do in just this initial installation and downloading and exploring R is make sure you understand your working directory and set your working directory. So one sort of tricky thing about R, especially for people who are coming from a different software package like SPSS or uh, or SAS, or even something simple like Microsoft Excel, is you, you, don't, you can't see your data. It just doesn't pop up at you um, when you open up the software, like in Microsoft Excel or in SPSS. You see your, your spreadsheet. And you can point and click to find your files. Um, so you have to sort of know where you are in your, uh, in your path or directory, so to speak. So establish your working directory or your working folder, if that helps. And the way, the way to do that is, again, go into R and click on R Preferences. And within that, if you click on Startup, there's a way to change your directory. That is, change your working directory. So for example, what I do is I have a documents folder on my uh, MacBook Pro. And within that documents folder, I have an R folder. And that's where I just keep all my files associated with R. And that's my working directory. When I open R, it automatically takes me there. Then I know if I, can, if I save files there, then the R software program doesn't have to look and try and find where my data are. Uh, where my scripts are, it knows they're all right there in my R folder. You don't have to make it document slash R, you can make it whatever you like. 
uh, but just know what your working directory is so you can keep track of files appropriately.